Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Google Cloud Next 2018. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hello, welcome everyone back to theCUBE's live coverage. This is day three of Google Cloud Cube coverage here. Google Next 2018, hashtag Google Next 18. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Jeff Frick. Our next two guests kicking off day three is Ed Anoff, the Director of Product Management at Google Cloud, part of the Apogee acquisition, really part of the APIs, really a big part of the story here at Google Next. And Chuck Nosman, Vice President of IT at T-Mobile, customer, Ed, thanks for coming on. Chuck, thanks for coming on. Thank you. So Apogee, big part of the story uh, at Google Next is you know, the role of APIs and services, huge. Uh, and I won't say nuance, I mean certainly Istio is a new to a lot of people, Kubernetes, yep. super really very uh, important piece of this new cloud service platform as well as just running workloads, multi-cloud, multi, multi, multi -cloud, et cetera. Um, what's the focus, what's going on for you guys at the event? Take a minute to explain the announcements and what you guys did here at the show. Sure, so you know, APIs are how software talks to software and what we um, announced this week at the show with Kubernetes and Istio are new ways for people to build software um, and deploy it. Uh, in, in new distributed fashions, and so that's creating new ways for tying your software together. Microservices, a lot of people are talking about now, um, are a key part of this. And so, from an Apogee perspective, you know, we're looking at facilitating how to make that communications happen, how to make it secure, how to make it efficient, uh, how to monitor it, and uh, so what we announced was that Apogee is making it now possible for you to have all the tools that we've given you for managing your APIs, for you know, getting your mobile apps to talk to your cloud services and all of that, now is also going to apply to these new microservices that you're building. And so we think it's, it's a pretty exciting thing. Um, a lot of our customers have been asking for this, um, and, and obviously uh, uh, Chuck being one of them. Um, and, uh, and so you know, that's what it's been all about for us this week. Chuck, obviously API is a key part of DevOps. You know, it's first started with slinging some APIs around, stitching them together. Developers voted with their code. Clearly APIs is the way that its software's working. Microservices takes us to a whole nother level. Yep. Uh, now, so operationalizing APIs seems easy, and, but it's, you got to start managing things differently. How are you guys taking that API and this new service management piece of it and kind of operationalizing APIs in, into T-Mobile? Yeah, we, we've been using Apogee for about four years now. Um, and so over the time, I think we were have 200 plus internal APIs. So we've, over that time, we've kind of learned how to operationalize that piece of it. Um, over the last couple years, we've really been focused on the microservice layers, um, uh, running cloud native applications essentially um, in that layer. And now with the, the Apogee hook into Istio, we're going to have a much better way to manage it. And it's really nice to see the platform uh, starting to grow uh, and mature um, along with us. So that's really great. I can only imagine how complicated it is to run real time, cloud native, and have also legacy. And I think one of the things I'd like to get your thoughts on is containers have become a nice piece of not ripping and replacing to bring in the new. You don't have to kill the old to bring in the new. With, yeah. And now with containers, Kubernetes, and microservices, and Istio, you have an ability to kind of do both. Yeah. Let's talk about how you guys do it, because this is not a perfect storm in a good way for enterprises. Well, yeah, it's, it's really good timing for us as well. We're just now starting our Kubernetes um, uh, journey on-premise, um, if you will. Um, so we're, uh, we're a big cloud foundry shop. Um, we're starting to put our legacy applications into Docker containers and moving them. We'll be moving them onto Kubernetes, and so you can see the whole the the, the containerization um, shift uh, as we go as we go through time. It, it's really a um, uh, for us. Uh, like I said, it's fortuitous at, at, at this timing because now with Istio coming in and being able to control all that, that's a great thing for us. Ed, talk about, um, you give a lot of history. To you, this is no normal APIs. This lingua franca has been around for a while. You've had a lot of experience in that. But a lot of the enterprises that we talk to are like, there's a lot of pressure in IT to do more now with cloud native. And, and now with the new services that are out there, it kind of give, takes the pressure off IT because the pressure of, oh, I got to, I got to, I had a sunset that app where I don't know when to kill that workload. I know I want to maybe transform it, but I don't want to have to disrupt all this stuff. So talk about the importance of non-disruption because this is, seems to be a, a conversation that's talked a lot in the hallways. Yeah, so it's, it's, it, that's exactly right. So, you know, what, what you see within enterprises is that there's a need to deliver a whole set of new applications. And a lot of these are connected to uh, uh, digital experiences, basically everything that you experience on your mobile apps, every new form of engaging with your customer. Uh, that's where a lot of the business growth is that's bringing um, 
uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, the, the funding for these, uh, these new initiatives. Um, but a lot of the core data of the enterprise is locked up within systems that have been operating very efficiently, but siloed for many years. And, uh, and so that's the part that, that we see the most, which is, um, you know, folks within IT come to us and say, look, you know, I've, I've been building these, these legacy systems for many years now, and I know that if I can just take the data that's locked up in these and bring these into these new ways of doing business, that, um, that, that it's going to have a huge impact on my, you know, on my business. Yeah. And that's, um, you know, that's where the question sits. And then the, the, the follow-up on that is, hey, you know, we want to, we want to make our businesses more like the way uh, you know uh, you guys are doing it in Silicon Valley, and we we see what you're doing with containers, and we see things like Kubernetes and cloud native, and we know that's the right way to build things. Um, but there has to be a way for us to bring all of these other assets that we've been building for the last 30 years along for the ride. And in fact, for most of these businesses, our response is, "Hey, it's not just a question of building along for the ride. That that's your core. That's your that has been." Uh, what you built your business on. So don't even just think about it as this thing that you somehow have to drag along. Think about how you actually can amplify it because it's been the source of, of, of your business for so long. Well, yeah, the, I would add to that is that um, it gives us scale and operation, a much better operational um, platform to work with. Um, uh, for us, we, we've grown tremendously, um, uh, our, or our growth has been tremendous over the last five years. Um, uh, we've gone from, I think, 30 million customers to 73 million customers, and frankly, to scale those systems up, uh, containerization is probably the only way we can go with it. And 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 with, uh, from an operational standpoint, having one platform like Kubernetes to to have to to operate for all of this stuff just just helps us out tremendously. Yeah, we hear that all the time. I think that's the biggest story around containers, outside of you know geeking out on the benefits of it, is that it really allows a nice bridge to the future. You don't have yes. to burn the boats, as they say in Silicon right. Valley. You know? right. And you can pick your, uh, <laughs> you can pick on the applications you want to keep around, right? Then you refactor them to be cloud native on the ones you don't. You don't have to go all the way, right? And so you can make it a much better that way. Chuck, I'm curious to get your take on, on the changing competitive environment. Because before, you know, you had these big complex systems and you wanted to keep them running. Now the pressure for more innovation, more applications, quicker applications, to leverage not only your inside stuff, but outside stuff, and how some of these technologies are helping you deliver that to your customers, your internal development um, teams. Well, yeah, like I said, scale, scale is one aspect of it. Um, performance is another, and the ability to move those workloads close to the customer, um, just, like, just like Google's trying to do with moving closer to the customer, we do the same thing, right? Um, and so that the hybrid cloud is real for us. Um, we, we run in, in almost all the clouds right now, and on-premise we treat that as a cloud as well. Um, but being able to do that uh, can only happen when we containerize stuff and, and utilize similar platforms on all these places. Right, and then you'll have this huge transformational shift over the next several years with 5G, right, that's yeah. coming. And yeah, we, we've been at it, it for a couple years now. Yeah, for a couple years, so yeah. this is going to be another huge yeah. wave of change inside yeah. your infrastructure. Yeah, yes, and it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> what attracted you to Google Cloud? To share, take a minute to explain, what was the, uh, the, uh, the interest in Google Cloud? Why Google Cloud for you guys? Well, we're, we're just getting started with it. Um, but it, it's really, uh, it's, it's the partnership we've had with Apigee um, uh, that's helped us kind of understand what's going on with Google Cloud. Um, but then the, op the open source nature of it as, as well as the, uh, the focus on AI and ML. Um, uh, that's why we're really taking a hard look at, at what's going on with Google Cloud because the, the attitude towards enterprises is, is great Culture. as well. Culture's a good fit there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting, a lot of people are attracted by some of the, the speed. I mean, we've been hearing here at the show, yeah. uh, you know, Google obviously built their, their business on being fast. Yeah, and, well, and having <laughs> your own network is, is massive yeah. as well, right? Yeah. And now you got the API. Ed, what's the future look like for APIs and Apigee inside Google? Give us a little taste of what you guys are working on, some of the projects you guys are passionate about, and some of the successes you've had, or any anecdotal you know, use case studies. So definitely. So, um, you know, APIs carry um, our customers' most important data, and uh, and data is the basis for uh, machine learning and AI. And so, you're going to see a lot of uh, product innovation for us about bringing uh, you know AI to the point of these data conduits that are what APIs are all, all about. It's the natural place to couple it with every business process. So that's a big deal for us. Um, I think that uh, you know the security aspect. You heard a lot about security um, in the in the keynotes. Um, again, you know APIs are the 
uh, conduit in many cases for, again, the enterprise's most important data to get outside of the perimeter of the enterprise. It has to be done in a secure way. Yeah. You know, and then finally, uh, being able to go and leverage the um, sort of collaborative nature, the stuff you see within open source, the community around all of this, again, you know, most APIs are about uh, bringing a lot more developers to you know, build more applications in less time around these APIs, and that is, uh, that collaboration component is something that we see a ton of opportunities in terms of leveraging uh, you know, Google's unique know-how in terms of, of advancing and pushing the state of the art in API management. So I think you're going to see a lot of that from us. Chuck, I'd love to get your thoughts on um, how you and IT, obviously IT's transforming, we talk about it all the time, how you keep track of uh, what's good, right? It used to be in the old days, the stack was pretty not that complex, and you go to Gardner, Magic Quadrant, oh, they're a leader, I'll kick the tires, they come in, a uh, vendor will come in, but some of the best cloud providers don't even show up on a Magic Quadrant because it's horizontally scalable. APIs changes the stack a little bit, a new modern middleware is emerging with Istio, and new sets of business models and services are emerging. So a lot of people are like trying to, be, how do you determine who's good <laughs> you know, in IT? Because you want to move the needle, you yeah. want to transform, you got a lot of build up. How do you kind of evaluate, is there any you know, new ways, or is it gut instinct, or specific things that you look at? Really good question. We, we look, um, uh, we, we try to adopt the open source stuff first, um, but we, from the company standpoint, we also look at the company themselves and who's really vested in what's going on with it. Like Apogee four years ago was, was really the only ones that were really only doing APIs, right? And, and the, their, their knowledge um, and the depth and their roadmap, um, that's what we really kind of look for. But to your point, things are changing so rapidly that you kind of have to go with the um, watch the open source community, where are all the um, uh, pull requests coming from or what platforms are they going after, um, and then track that. And that's, where, that's what we try to do. And so when we see Kubernetes and the explosion that's happening on that, the tooling that's coming around that, we know that's going to be good for enterprises going forward, so we're going to be heavily invested it's, it's in It's interesting, platform. we always talk about developers, but what's interesting that's coming out of the show that we're observing is, it's always about developers doing building apps, that's oh, great. absolutely. But the role of an operator inside IT, it used to be an operator would you know, maybe provision some storage and some, and some servers, now the role of what an operator, it used to be network op guys, now it's yeah. kind of more of a holistic view. Your thoughts on, on, on this, I know it's super early, but the emergence of these two personas in IT is yeah, super well, critical. It, we look at it a lot, it's, automation, right? That, that's where it all comes, it comes uh, to play. So if you've got a platform like a Kubernetes where you can have all this automation built around it and you let the developers just do their thing and focus on the, uh, the business logic, um, it's huge. So there, there is kind of two personalities and the, um, and the caring and feeding of that platform is just as important as the guys writing the applications across the yeah, top. Yeah, it's really a great environment. Yeah. Final question for you guys. Observations on the show, Google Next. What's your observation? Obviously you got an API perspective just globally looking down. If you kind of look, zoom out and look, at, look down at the show, thoughts and, and commentary on what's happening here? Uh, you know, I think the, the scale of it has been amazing. You know, and, and um, uh, you know, we, we became part of, uh, of Google two years ago. We were here at the show last year, looking at it this year. Uh, and, uh, and the level of growth, the activity, um, attendees, uh, the number of announcements, it's just been amazing. It's been very exciting for us to be part of. Cool. Chuck, your thoughts? Uh, super impressed. This is, this is our first one, uh, really, that we've, we've come to. Um, we were even participating on stage on the K-Native. We, we wrote some applications to work with K-Native. Um, uh, uh, but it's a, it's a very diverse, Crowd, which is awesome. Uh, I think you really need that. Um, some of the others I don't see as much. Um, so I think what Google is doing, um, and again, their approaches to enterprise, looking more at solutions, um, vertical solutions, uh, very impressed with what's going on here. It's really great, John. Congratulations on all your success with the APIs. You guys have done the work. And open source, it's where the, your employees want to work, they want to meet other people, and this is where the co-creation, that's where the assessments of the vendors right, happen. Yeah. <laughs> Opensource.t-mobile.com, that's where we want to be. <laughs> all right, great. <laughs> Chuck, Ed, thanks so much. So Thank you. Group. Really appreciate the time. It's so theCUBE live coverage here in San Francisco covering Google Cloud's conference, Next18. We'll be right back with more day three coverage. Stay with us, we'll be right back.